Hello everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Being ACCA. This is Tushita Gupta, ACC affiliate and in this video we are going to be solving the section A throughput accounting questions from the Kaplan kit. So this is question number 55. Let's get started. When demand exceeds supply, which of the following situations would increase the TPAR throughput accounting ratio? So first of all, whenever we have to see whether there will be an increase or a decrease in a ratio, first we see what the formula is, what the numerator and the denominator are, so that we are able to see what impact will be caused on these numerators and denominators. So basically the formula of TPAR that we have is your return per factory hour return per factory hour and then that is divided by your costs per factory hour right so this is the formula that we have now let's have a look at all the options that we are given with and then we'll see that which will cause an increase in the throughput accounting ratio so an increase uh, in the speed of the fastest machine in the production process so if you do that that will not have any impact why because throughput is actually based on how uh, you know how much you, you can earn with your slowest machine right because uh, it is the bottleneck the slowest machine is your bottleneck so that is why uh, option A is eliminated. Now let's have a look at B. Unexpected increase in the factory rent. Now what this will do is this will increase my uh, denominator and when my denominator increases will my numerator increase or uh, will like my final answer increase? No right. So that is why B is also uh, crossed out. Then let's have a look at our uh, Third statement, a 5% wage increase linked to an 8% improvement in productivity. Now, what will happen over here is even though, uh, you know, my wages will increase, so my costs will go up a little bit, but there will be a higher increase in my productivity. So that is why my return per factory hour will, uh, you know, actually go up because uh, even though I am little bit increasing the wages but at the same time the productivity is increasing by more so that is why option c will give me an increase in my tpar now let's have a look at option d also a 10 percent sales discount to stimulate the demand by 20 percent now stimulating the demand is not our criteria because you know even at the moment uh you know we are not able to meet the demand because of our bottleneck so demand is not an issue and even if we increase that we will not get any better benefit now uh, let's have a look at our question number 56 so this says uh, a manufacturing company decides which of the three mutually exclusive products to make in its factory on the basis of maximizing the company's tpar now we have the data already given to us over here uh, selling price direct material machine hours total factory costs excluding direct materials are these many Company cannot make enough of any of the products to satisfy external demand entirely as the machine hours are restricted. So this is our bottleneck. So we have to tell over here what will be the impact of the following actions on the company's throughput accounting ratio and we have to tick in the uh, table that has been provided over here. So first of all what we need to work out is Basically, we have to see how much, uh, you know, we are uh, earning throughput from them. So first of all, let's suppose this is for X, this is for Y and this is for Z. Then uh, let's have a look at the throughput first. So with regards to the throughput, I just have to take the selling price and subtract my direct material cost. So first of all, 60 minus 40 will give me 20. Then for Y, uh, 40 minus 10 will give me 30. And similarly for Z, 20 minus 16 will give me $4. So this is my throughput per unit, right? And then I calculate how much is there, uh, you know, how much machine hours are they taking? Because it is the machine hours that is my bottleneck so machine hours per unit it is given that this is 10 this is 20 and this is 2.5 so now i can find out my numerator of the tpar formula which is return per hour return per hour this is nothing but uh, the throughput per unit divided by the machine hours per unit so 20 divided by 10 will give me 2 30 divided by 20 will give me 1.5 and then 
uh, 4 divided by 2.5 is going to give me 1.6. So these are my returns that I have achieved. Now it is told over here that these are mutually exclusive products, right? So for mutually exclusive products, what will the company do? Company will, you know, eventually they are here to maximize their profits. So they will want to produce unlimited of the X product. So now uh, we have to see options over here that if the, we are making these changes, then how it will be impacted. So if there are changes to the selling price and material cost of product X and product Z will only change the TPAR if the values change enough to mean that the company would prefer to make that product instead of product X. That means that, you know, uh, if these returns go higher, higher than two, then only the company will want to make something else apart from the product X. So now uh, let's read the first statement. The first statement says increase in the selling price of product Z by 10%. So product Z, uh, if you increase the selling price, the selling price that is given is 20. So if you increase that by 10%, that will be 22. So for if I calculate the revised one, this will be 22 minus 16. So 22 minus 16 will give you uh, 4 and then you divide that by 2.5. Uh, sorry, 22 minus 16 will give you 6 and then 6, if you divide 6 by 2.5, you will get your revised uh, return per hour and that will be 2.4. So definitely, yes, this will improve the company's existing TPAR. Now, increasing the selling price of Y by 10%. So let's have a look at that scenario as well. So this is uh, 40. And if I make that uh, increased by 10%, so that would become 44. So 44 minus 10, which is my material cost. And I divide that by uh, the time that it is taking. And that is 20. So that gives me 1.7. So already I am earning 2. So this will not uh, you know, be enough. 1.7 Will again not be enough because I'm earning two from the product X. So I will tick not over here. Then reduce the material cost of Z by 5%. So material cost at the moment of Z is 16. And if you reduce that by 5%, so that would be 95% of 16. So if I just calculate that, 20 is my selling price. Subtracting, uh, you know, the reduced material cost. So that will be 15.2 and if you divide that by the time it is taking which is 2.5 and with this you will have your answer as 1.92 now again 2 is bigger than 1.92 so this will not help to improve the TPER now having a look at the fourth option reducing the material cost of Y by 5% so with respect to Y we have a material cost of 10. So if you reduce that by 5%, that will be 9.5. So my revised will become 40 minus 9.5. And if I divide that by the time it is taking, which is 20 hours. So with that, I will get my answer as 1.525. Now again, this is smaller than 2. So this will not help me improve my TPAR. Now let's move on to question number 57. 57 says Sky Limited operates in an environment where products go through two processes and details of their capacity are below. So for process P, we have eight machines uh, operating at 90% capacity. Each unit, uh, each machine produces six units per hour. Then there are six machines operating at 85% capacity, nine units per hour. We have to find out over here the throughput uh, per hour of the bottleneck resource to two decimal places. So Sky Limited produces the cloud, which is not a popular product. The marketing manager has therefore decided to apply a price discount of 15% on the selling price of $20 per unit. Material cost is $5 and direct labor cost per unit is twice that of the material costs for the cloud. It currently takes 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.2 hours and 0.3 hours to make a unit of the cloud on the machines in process p and q respectively so first of all we have to identify which is the bottleneck because we have to find throughput per hour of the bottleneck resource so with respect to that we can see that uh, process p process p is having uh, eight machines 
and then six uh, is the number of units that are there per hour and then it is operating at the 90 percent capacity so i can multiply that by 90 percent so that means that my output that i can generate hourly is 43.2 units per hour right so then again, similarly, I can do that for Q. So for Q, it is going to be, uh, again, six uh, machines. So six multiplied by nine units per hour and then 85% capacity. So with this, I will have that this is going to produce 45.9 units per hour. So we do not have a lot of information over here. So that is why we'll see that which machine is slower. So I can say that uh, the machine P is slower. And so, you know, the process P rather is slower. So that is why this will be my bottleneck. Now let's work out the... Uh, remaining of the calculations first of all we need to find out the throughput so for throughput it is said over here that on 20 dollars there will be a 15 percent discount applicable so my selling price comes out to be 20 multiplied by 85 percent and that gives you 17 dollars now this is your selling price then you have a look at the material so with respect to material we are told that the material cost is five dollars so now we know that our throughput is actually twelve dollars per unit now this is our throughput that is per unit now let's see how much time it is taking on the bottleneck that we had identified so for process p it is taking 0 0.2 hours so for the throughput per hour of the bottleneck resource which is the requirement over here i will simply take the throughput that is 12 and divide that by the time it is taking which is 0 0.2 so this will give me my answer as 60 and it wants two decimal places so i'm just going to put a decimal and place two zeros over here so that i meet the requirement of the question uh, now let's have a look at the next one a manufacturing company uses machine c which is operational for five hours a day to manufacture four products factory costs are these many per day company uses throughput accounting and its objective is to maximize the profits so if the company is not able to increase the availability of machine c operational hours what is the production ranking of the product why so first of all what we'll have to do over here is that uh, we can see that the uh, all these products are produced in the same factory so the cost per machine hour is nothing but the same because you know uh, now that the costs are same we can rank them according to the throughput that they are earning per machine hour otherwise we will be using the tpars to rank them so uh, what we can do over here is first of all we know that the production rate is already given as 200 500 400 and 350 now uh, the next thing that we have with us is uh, the selling price and we also have the material cost and we also have the conversion costs given to us per unit terms. So uh, what we need to do over here is first of all let's find out the throughput that we are earning per unit right. So throughput will be nothing but 350 minus 120 which will give you 230 then 190 minus 95 will give you 95. And then uh, 270 minus 160 will give you 110. And then 215 minus 75 will give you 140. So this is the throughput that you are earning per unit. Now with respect to uh, the you know taking it for per machine hour so basically what you're going to do is you're going to multiply these figures with the production rate so with that we will find out that how much throughput we are earning every hour because this is given in per machine hour terms so if i just multiply 230 with 200 i will have 46,000. and then if i multiply 95 with 500 i will have 47,500. Then 110 multiplied by 400 will give me 44,000. And then 140 multiplied by 350 gives me 49,000. Now I will have to rank these. So the highest that I can see over here is your Z. Then the second that I see is 47,500. 
and then you have 46 and then you have 44. So we are asked the ranking of Y. Y is the fourth one. So we are going to select fourth. Moving on to the next one. A manufacturing company uses three processes to make its products X and Y. The time available on the three processes is reduced because of the need for preventative maintenance and rest breaks. So the table below details the process times per product and the daily time that is available. Now we have to see that these are the processes. Okay, the daily demand is also given that for X it is 10 and for Y it is 16 units respectively. So we have to select over here that which of the following will improve the throughput so now let's have a look uh, first of all increasing the efficiency of the maintenance routine for process 2 so uh, first of all we have to see over here the throughput we have to see what will improve the throughput so throughput is nothing but something that is on the basis of the bottleneck resource right so if we have to see if we have to find out over here what is the bottleneck resource we will have to work out that to meet the demand uh, which is the uh, which of the resource are we having in a lesser quantity so uh, you know we have to first of all supply uh, 10 units and 16 units of x and y respectively and we have the available hours also so 1 multiplied by 10 plus 16 multiplied by 0 0.75 will give me my requirement for 1. Again, 0 0.75 multiplied by 10 plus 1 multiplied by 16 and then 1 multiplied by 10 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 16. So this will give me my daily demand that I have for uh, these processes, right? So if I just carry out these calculations, so... 16 multiplied by 0.75 is 12 and 12 plus 10 gives you 22. So we require 22 and we have 22. That means we have enough of this resource. Then 0.75 multiplied by 10 gives me 7.5 and then 16 gives me 23.5. So I want 23.5 but I only have 22. And then let's have a look at the last one. 10 plus uh, 0.5 into 16 gives you 18. So we need 18 of this resource and we have 18. So that is uh, sufficient for us. So which will improve throughput? Definitely if you increase the efficiency of the maintenance routine for process 2, this will help you, inc uh, inc you know, improve your throughput because that is your bottleneck and throughput is only improved when you are improving your bottleneck resource. Let's have a look at the next one. Which one of the below statements is not true of throughput accounting? So we have to select which is not true. So throughput accounting considers that the only the variable costs in the short run are materials and components. Now this statement is true. That is why it cannot be your answer. Throughput considers that time as a bottleneck resource has value, not elsewhere. Again, this is true. Throughput accounting views stock building as a non-value adding activity and therefore discourages it. Uh, that is also definitely true. And then we are left with the last one. Throughput accounting was designed as a decision making tool for situations where there's a bottleneck in the production process. Now, this statement is not true because, you know, throughput accounting is rather a performance measurement tool instead of being a decision making tool. And one of the advantages that it offers is that it can be used by the managers to make decisions that have outcomes that are goal congruent with corporate agencies aims but it is not however any decision making tool so that makes the statement wrong and hence this is our answer moving on to the last question for this topic which of the following is a definition of the tpar now i just wrote it at the beginning when we were solving the very first question of this topic and the formula that we have learned is nothing but return per factory hour divided by the costs per factory hour so c is the correct answer with this we have done all section a questions that were given in the kit for the throughput accounting uh, catch you in the next one where we'll be doing environmental accounting. Thank you so much for watching.